Ajamadugudu, <laughs> Abakikoreye barahagarara ati muhungu ndagutegetse byuka warupfuye arabaduka atangira kuvuga Yesu amusubiza nyina 
bose baterwa n'ubwoba bahimbaza imana bati umuhanuzi ukomeye abonetse muri twe kandi bati imana igendereye ubwoko bwayo iyo nkuru y'ibyo byose y'ibyo yakoze yamamara iyudaya hose no mu gihugu cyose giherereye naho amen abami bakabiri hano turangiriza ibice bibiri burongo wa 19 kwiza kuri 22 second kings chapter 2 verse 19 Mami wa kabiri, miche bibiri, morongo wa chumini chenda, tujezo mba kwenye na kabiri. Chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. Wucheye, awanya mudugudu wa huwa bugireli sabati. Doru yumudugudu, uburjo uriheza, muku bireba data buja. Ariko ama azia honi mabi, kani muri chiji ugu, inya akira rumba. Aravu gati, ni munza ni limere zonsha, muishire muumunyu, nuko warai muza nira. Arasoka ajya ku isoko y’amazi amishamo umunyu aravuga ati “Uwiteka aravuze ngo ahumanu ya yamazi ntabwo azongera kwicana cyangwa kurumbya nuko amazi arahumanuka na bugingo n’umwuka elisa yabivuze amen Imana ihabwa icyubahiro Praise the name of the Lord Iri jambo narihaye tema ivuga ngo igihe cyo kugendererwa n’Imana ni iki This is the time to be blessed by God or this is a time to be visited by God. Praise the name of Jesus. We have the word of the Lord. We have shared the word. Let us start from 2 Kings chapter 2. Verse 19 to 22. We see the story of a man called Elisha. But if you go uh, the pages beforehand, you will find a story of a man called Elijah. These are two men who, are, who live together on a journey. We know Elisha as a great man in Israel. He is a man who lived with God in a special way. This man built and restored the nation while it was demolished. This man manifested rain after three years of drought. This man destroyed the idols in, in Israel and restored the altar of the Almighty. This man, his eyes were open for Israel and he was alone. This man operated or worked with a man called Elisha. When he saw Elisha, Elisha was an entrepreneur. One day Elijah told Elisha, stop whatever you're doing and follow me. Among the greatest things is to leave things that were profitable to you. And yet you, are, you had glory in whatever you were doing. And when someone tells you, come. When you see physically, you'll find that there's nothing of use or profitable in whatever you're going in. These are things that usually confuse or put people in doubt. And you are first confused in your mindset. And then your eyes, your physical eyes. When they look upon what they're going to do, they see what is... What, what profit is it? But I say this man called Elisha. Because of the man who had called him. Just as you also, there is someone who calls you and you do not ask what is going to happen. You just obey and go. I believe that uh, Elisha obeyed because of the authority he saw in Elijah. He left and abandoned whatever he was doing. He was an agriculturalist, he was a farmer, a great man. Just think, he used to plow with oxen. It means that he was an honorable man. 
life. And he had a good life. But just imagine for someone to tell you, abandon whatever you're doing and come and serve me. This man was not going to serve God. He was going to serve Elijah. This is what the word of the Lord tells us. But he had no doubt in his heart. He did not say, I'm not coming. The word tells us he obeyed and went. And he started serving Elijah. They lived many years. They lived in various ways of life. And then he served him diligently. And when time came, I would like to tell you, Elijah said, if I leave my son behind, if I, leave my, if I tell my son that I'm going to leave him, he's going to have grief in his heart. Then he started telling Elisha, stay behind, I'm going somewhere. There are three places, uh, it amounts to three places, I'm not going to say of it so much. But throughout this journey, Elisha encountered young prophets. And these young prophets truly prophesied. And they told him, did you know that your master is going to be taken away from you? In other words, you're going to be taken from your master. What is the direction of your life? You abandoned whatever you had, your possessions. You left your wealth behind. And now you're going to be taken away from me. He's going to be taken away from you without any profit you got from him. But listen to what a great word. Because of the way Elisha lived with Elijah. Yes, whenever you're going to uh, receive or obtain great things, the first story that comes are things that are discouraging, things that are weakening you. It is illness. It is gossip. It is hunger. Your friends leave you, abandon you. And when you go through all this, what happens? And there are troops, there are prophets who come and prophesy. They come and say, your master is going to be taken from you. But I would like to tell you what Elisha, great word Elisha said. He told them that I know, but keep silent. I know he's going to be taken away from me, but keep silent. In the time or the time to be visited by God. There are things that you must silence behind you. There are things that you must not obtain in your heart. There are things that you must take away from your mindset. Because all these things separate you from God when you put them in your heart. And they stop you from receiving the promises of God. But this servant of God, what he did, for, for almost 50 prophets to prophesy the same thing, it was great. But it was a miracle what Elisha did. The word tells us when they came to Jordan, Elijah hit the water, struck the water, and it was separated into two. And when they reached across the river, he spoke of a great word. That he said, Elisha, I have lived with you throughout. I have not seen any mistake on you. Now I'm going to be taken away from you. He told him the secret that he had not told him beforehand that he's going to be taken away. Therefore, when you stay with God, he tells you, reveals secrets. To you. When you delay with God, God does what is contrary to what men think. Elijah gave Elisha an exam that is great. I know some people may fail. When you think of all your problems and tribulation, you find it's too much. And, and yet God wants to solve just one issue, one of your issues. And when you look at all your problems, you can't, you're confused. You say, even this one. And minutes go by and you're still thinking, you're delaying on something and then God leaves you and goes away. 
But because Elisha had seen this man Elijah, he gave him a great word that confused Elijah's heart. He told him, I want two portions of the spirit that operates in you. Then Elijah said, you've asked me of something hard. You've asked me of something that is beyond my authority. Elijah gave him a snare or tricked him once again. I want you to listen to the exam that he gave him. When you see me with your physical eyes and I'm and I'm being taken away from you. What you're requesting, it shall be given to you as you request. But if you do not see me, it shall be as you. Listen to what happened. Before he received that miracle, firstly, he has encountered rumors and gossip. And it has gone through prophets, his brothers. Secondly, God has separated Jordan and its sin. When they reached across Jordan, Elijah spoke of something great. Before he left, there was a whirlwind. A whirlwind that should have killed him. But I would like to tell you this. When you want something truly, when you know what you desire, when you know what you desire, there is nothing that can discourage you. For when you, where you're seeing, you know it. You, what you desire, you or yourself know it. Uh, stones and sticks came in the whirlwind. But he said, Master, Master, you are horses and chariots for Israel. Elijah left him. But because of the faith of Elisha, Elijah's clock fell upon the ground. Imagine for someone to get their clock, God's things are amazing. Just imagine. Just a clock like this. Just a clock like this. Can it feed you? It does not even fit you well when you wear it. But within him, he had received great authority and possession. He had received something great. Church of Christ, let me tell you this. It is the, the, the most greatest thing is the, is the wealth that you have in the spirit. What you have in your spirit is greater than what we see tangibly. In a, in, a, in a spirit there is life there is eternal life there are things our physical eyes desire in the spirit there are good friends in the spirit there is peace in the, in the spirit there is honor and glory in the spirit there is life even if they do not, they do not see what you had received physically but he had received something great. He had received the word. And he knew so well that his life had changed. I would like to tell you, my friend. Jesus told a man called Isaiah. And the prophet Ezekiel. They had a problem of the king of Assyria. And he had scared them for a long time. Then he told them, my children. My children do not look upon the one who kills the, 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 the flesh. But look upon the one who kills the flesh and the spirit. When we are in the spirit. We command everything and it listens. When we are in the spirit, everything has ears. When we are in the spirit, everything has ears. This man received spiritually. After he received spiritually, he knew so well that he had taken something great. Then he partook of that clock. And he came to Jordan. 
the one who had crossed him before was Elijah. The second time he wanted himself to cross. He wanted to see what he has trusted. Is it working? My friend, I want to tell you. Your greatness comes from how you get out of your tribulation. Your greatness comes from how you fight your battles. This is where God strengthens you. This is where his name is glorified. Uh, Elisha saw this uh, tribulation or this barrier. At times God gives us weapons. And we are defeated with those weapons, yet we have those weapons. Have you understood this? God gives you authority to use it, but the devil hides that authority that you have. This is where there is a problem. I want to tell you that you have authority. You have authority. Within yourself, there is authority. Within yourself, there is great authority. But today, I want to awaken you and tell you that Elijah was a man like yourself. Elijah was a man like yourself. I want you to change your mindset. I want you to prophesy for your own life. I want you to tell your tribulation and your problems. Show them that you're a great person. Show them where you want to reach or where to go. Even if demons do not agree with you, even if things that discourage you prevail, but where you want to go, you shall reach. For who is within you is great. For the man who is within you is powerful. For the man who is within you is victorious. He is of great wealth. What is required of you is to believe. And to believe that you have this power and authority. When he encountered Jordan, which was waiting for him like a problem, it was an exam to him. For example, River Nyabarongo, you want to go by it or cross it. And yet you have just a clock, you just want to strike the water so that it can separate for you and go through. Your thoughts shall be contrary to what people think because people will say that you're a nutcase or you're insane. But I want to tell you that in insanity is where God operates. In our faith is where God operates. Listen to what he did. He got this clock and started thinking of all the works of the Lord upon his life. He looked at all the works that God had used Elijah to do. And he got the, his clock and said, may the God of Elijah manifest. And Jordan was separated in two. And Elijah went across. Elijah went across. When he reached across, I want to tell you people, those same prophets he had left behind, they started asking him, how shall you leave? Your master has left you. I want to tell you, listen to what happened. Elisha did not explain himself because he had changed, his status had changed. When things change, you do not need to explain yourself. My friend, I want to tell you, fight so much so that things can be transformed and be changed. But when you explain yourself, you'll explain yourself wrongly. Some, sometimes we explain ourselves wrongly. But in this time to be visited by God, may God speak on our behalf. May God explain us. May God speak because he is God. God people may say what they desire to speak. People can do what they want to do. But when God explains you, those ones who say it is impossible, those ones who say that you're insane, 
are the same people that shall say that your God is the true God. And this is the time for it. And this is the time for it to be fulfilled. This is the time for God's promises to be fulfilled. Because the time of tears are done. The time of weeping is finished. For God has given it to his people. His people shall not wail forever. His people shall not complain forever. He is a God that can do all things. He is a God that can do everything. He is a great God. He is a God full of beauty and glory. He is a God full of magnificence. In that moment, the servants he started also having servants who, him who was a servant listen in your servanthood how did you learn in your servanthood how did you learn hallelujah this is what is great in your servanthood how did you learn Whatever you learned from there. Because what you did in your servanthood it is what shall come back to you. Let us give him glory. Thereafter. He did not take time to explain himself, but the times explained him. Did, did you know seasons explain us? Seasons explain us. Praise the name of the Lord. Thereafter, listen. The greatest miracle that I'm going to tell you in this word. And then they brought problems to him. Elijah used to solve his problems. Now he is going to solve problems. I prophesy to you who is here. You also are going to solve problems. You are also going to solve problems. Because God is going to give you a marriage. God is going to give you children and you are going to solve problems. You are always being solved problems for but now you are going to solve problems yourself. Because God has changed your status. God is a God who changes our history. He is a God who turns our pages and God has accomplished this the page of poverty God has accomplished God has accomplished the page of grief God has accomplished the page of whatever God is a God who changes He is a God who changes your life He is a God who changes your history He is a God who changes your circumstance and they told him master him who was a servant him who was confused and they changed the way they spoke they changed their language and they said we your servants our master as you see this neighbor this neighborhood this city is magnificent it is beautiful but within this city we are dying we have problems uh, there is drought we, and uh, evidently the water is bitter when calf or, or livestock come and drink of this water they die when people drink of this water they get problems and this uh, soil because the water is uh, bitter this soil is also unproductive. There is a problem. There is a problem. I would like to tell you. The time of tribulation is done. The time of tribulation is done. Because God is blessing his people. Because God is blessing his people. God is visiting his people. For he is a God that visits his own people. And he knows what we desire. He knows our requests. In these seven days we are going to uh, enter. 
May God visit you and your family and your church and your nation. May God visit you and may God demolish you. May God uproot something. May God destroy you. May you receive something. May you receive an encounter. For when God visits you, everything is transformed. Everything is transformed. Everything is agreeable. Listen to what he used. I want you to know of the authority and power that you have. He used something simple, something easy. He said, bring salt. Uh, this uh, salt we use in food. And he got that salt and sprinkled this water. Did this salt make this water pure? I ask you, what changed this water? It is the word that he used. The word he used. The word that he used. I would like to tell you. Receive this word and believe in it. It is possible there are things that have turned sour. It's possible that you're encountering losses. But when the word manifests, it does not fall to the ground. God fulfills his word. Because God escorts his word. And God follows the one he has Receive this word. Receive this word. Hallelujah. And he said the almighty promises that this water shall never be bitter and this land shall never be unproductive again. There are things that have become bitter upon your life. You have different things, various things that have turned bitter. Bitterness is what your physical eyes shows you. Bitterness from your friends and your family. At times you look at it with your physical eyes but you see everything is turning impossible and you turn bitter in your mind and your heart but I would like to inform you and tell you as I bring this yes, word, may God purify yes, your life may God cleanse your life yes, may God purify your life whatever has made you impure send this word the word that cleanses your life be it illness in your body may God heal your body Body. Be it anything that has failed. May it go through in the name of Jesus. May it go through in the name of Jesus. May it go through in the name of Jesus. For this word tells me that he is a God that is able to do and he can command and everything shall Everything is agreeable. I command in the name of Jesus. I command in the name of Jesus. May God visit your life. Everything that was dead may, be life. may it be restored with life. Your marriages that have been destroyed may they have life. May you receive children in the name of Jesus. For He is a God that can do all things. Hallelujah. The peace that you have not had, you receive it. It. If you do not have sleep, receive sleep. Receive sleep in the name of Jesus. 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 Receive sleep. You who had a voice of fear in your heart, receive peace in your heart. Receive peace in your heart. Peace in your heart. God is giving you peace. God is blessing you with peace. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive peace in your heart. Hallelujah. God is going to give us 
God is going to give us a great, great time. Whoever shall reach this place shall be healed. Without prayer, just the word we shall unbind them. The word shall deliver them. This is what the Lord Almighty is. There is a new restoration. There is a new restoration. There is a new revival. I like to tell you. God has opened portals. There is a portal that is being opened. There is a large portal that is being opened. That was closing off people. God is doing this. So that his name shall be glorified. He's a God that can do all things. He's a God full of power. He's a righteous God. He's a God of peace. Hallelujah. This man called Elisha started operating in spirit. He was a youth man in his season. I want to tell you that you're useful. You're of great value. You're great. You're of great value before the Lord's eyes. You're of great use before people's eyes. Because because God knows you because God loves you you're of great value you're valuable and whatever God has spoken upon your life shall be fulfilled do not look at what you're going through because he's a God full of authority take heart this word that we read it is a miracle that Jesus performed I want to tell whoever is listening as Jesus was he still is he shall never be changed by people he shall never be changed by seasons just as he was in the ancient days he still is today as he used to walk he still walks he still walks he still works. He still works. And he is alive. And he is within us. And he is full of power. And he is a hero. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. And he is full of wealth. This man that we are serving is not poor. This man is not foolish. He is of great wisdom. He is full of strength and power. He can do all things. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. He had performed many miracles we had seen beforehand. He had performed a miracle in Capernaum as we had seen. He encountered a woman full of sourness and bitterness in her heart. This woman had a great trib tribulation. She had spent 12 years and she was bleeding. She had given all her possessions but wherever she would take her possession to it would failed she failed to be healed and she was an abomination because she was bleeding or this illness that she had for a long time she would not come close to people she was isolated but she knew of a man called Jesus for he does not isolate us he came because of the evil he did not come for the good he came for the wicked and the evil he came for those who are weak he came for those who are sinners so that he can take them from sin so that he can transform their life and show them the good part and, he say, and she said even if it is this way even if I do not have Jesus but I am going to fight. I am going to fight. I am going to raise My life will be transformed. These demons who have bound me for 12 years, but today, I shall see this man and I shall look for this man. I shall touch this man and I shall not need anyone to touch me. Today. The word tells me that she raised. She fought. And she, and she touched the end of Jesus' cloth. And Jesus knew. And he said that someone has touched me. There is one who's touched me. Someone has touched me. Then the disciples asked him, 
Master, there is a crowd of people here. And now you're asking yourself, there's someone who's touching you? All of us are touching you. There's no one who's not touching you. At times we touch Jesus in a chaos, but when you touch him in chaos, when you speak about him in chaos, you do not see him. This is why we are always on mountains. But because this woman touched Jesus with a desire in her heart, she had things that she was fed up with. Let us get fed up with some things. Let us get fed up with some things in our heart. Because when you grow fed up with them or where we with them, Jesus grows fed up with them too. Then Jesus said, someone has touched me. There is a power that has just left me. There is a power that has just left me. When you touch Jesus, he knows and you know too. When Jesus has visited you, he knows. Be it in your dreams. Be it in any miracle. But he knows that he's the one who's done it. Listen to what happened. Then Jesus looked at the crowd and then he saw this woman and this woman prostrated before Jesus and said, Master, I had spent 12 years on this mountain of bleeding but just as I touched you, I felt this mountain being demolished and my life has grown transformed. I felt peace come to me yes. and Jesus said my daughter peace. your faith has healed you go in peace and you shall never be ill yes. ever again you who's upon the mountain I of illness I want to tell you Jesus as Jesus was he still whatever whatever you're going through and God Jesus and he's coming to your home and he's coming to your place as, as, as long as you believe as long as you believe his word this woman never bled ever again then again Jesus continued to the uh, city of nine he was almost going to Jericho for that is where he was leading to and then he heard of news in his heart and he heard of great screams. There was a, a, there was a family that had great trouble. People were crying. And Jesus said that there is a widow who has lost his, her son too. And yet he was his only son. And now see her family is over. Then Jesus was filled with compassion. Jesus was filled with compassion. Hallelujah, servants of God. May the compassion of the Almighty manifest upon your life. May it manifest upon you. May the masses of God come upon your life. May it come to your well, to your possessions and your life. For Jesus doesn't explain himself. He doesn't explain himself. He never explains himself. Uh, then uh, he encountered people carrying a buyer or a coffin or a casket. But it, he was carrying a buyer. Listen to what happened. But because of the authority he had within himself, he knew of the authority he had. And he said that I believe. I am full of power. I am full of authority. I command that it is fulfilled. Today, they are also going to accept that I am full of authority. And they are going to see it. This is what Jesus said. If you do not believe by the word, you will believe by miracles. Then he had to perform a miracle. Because there were many non-believers there. They had to believe that he is full of power. That he is full of kingship. That he has authority. He just, they stopped after they stopped those who are crying immediately stopped crying and they started asking themselves this man who's stopping us from walking what man is he? this is also a miracle secondly he just commanded in a word boy 
I command you. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Listen to how Jesus' way of speaking is different from us. People usually say uh, sleeping and death are two different things. Jesus did not see this boy that, that this boy had died. But others thought that this boy had died. And then Jesus just commanded that wake up. Listen to this power. Feel this power. Listen to the power of belief. My friend, train yourself to decree. Train, train yourself to declare. Train your heart to declare. Train your heart to create. Train your heart to speak boldly. Train your heart to speak of a bold word in your heart. And do not say it is impossible. What is impossible? What is impossible? Everything is, is possible with Jesus. Then that boy immediately arose. Now listen to what people said. People were amazed. And they said, what is happening? Praise Jesus. Amen. When they say that, they say, praise Jesus. Jesus has visited his people. Others say that a great prophet has visited his people. Then the one who had died was given back to his mother. My friend, brethren, I encourage you on this, sec on, on this month. Many things have failed. But Jesus has visited us once again. Jesus has visited us once again. And Jesus has brought second chances. Everything that had failed are going to go through. And you're going to have greater times because Jesus has come back. Jesus has visited you once again. Jesus has visited you once again. I want you to stand on your feet and let us pray. Let us pray. Hallelujah. 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 Yo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. I want us to pray for three spirits. The spirit of discouragement. The spirit of fear, secondly. Thirdly, the word that says impossibility, the word of impossibility. I want us to cast these spirits. For in Jesus, everything is doable. Prophesy upon your life and say that I am alive. I shall be, uh, leave. I shall leave. I shall get married. I shall give birth to children. I shall have possession and wealth. I shall serve God. Prophesy for your own life. Lord Jesus, you're a great God. You're a God full of grace. You're a God of seasons. You're a God full of authority are full of authority of, over the heavens. A great God. An amazing God and a powerful God. A God full of glory. A God full of greatness. You're a God of peace. I pray in the name of Jesus. I rebuke those spirits. I rebuke the spirit of discouragement. I curse it. I curse it. In the mighty name of Jesus. The spirits that fail, we can the spirits that discourage your people, the spirits that I cast them in the name of Jesus. That the uh, spirit of fear, I send them away. The spirit of impossibility, I rebuke it. I chase spirits. I chase fear. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of impossibility. I curse this in the name of Jesus. I prophesy for your people. I, I, I put them into your promises. As I put them into your in the name 
name of Jesus. I prophesy for their lives. I prophesy upon their lives. I prophesy peace. I declare happiness. I declare them stepping in holiness. I declare in the name of Jesus. I pray on this seventh month of March. I take them from the wilderness. I deliver them from wilderness. The wilderness of not receiving. The wilderness of being cheated. In the name of Jesus. I declare. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy. May you go out of heaven. Get out of poverty. Get out of fear. Get out of sickness. Get out of rumors. Get out of hunger. In the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy for your life. That you may enter. That you may enter. I pray in the spiritual realm. I rebuke. I rebuke bad dreams. I rebuke bad dreams. I rebuke wrong thoughts. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 May they start dreaming good dreams. May they start having good dreams. And then they have good dreams. May they have good dreams of divinity. Dreams to be filled, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our God. I pray for great protection upon their life, upon their families, upon their, uh, upon their families in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Lord Almighty May you protect your church We show you your church Lord. We destroy the, the voice of the enemy In the name of Jesus We rebuke the voice of the enemy We rebuke humility, humiliation We call upon your glory My God, my King You're amazing And you're astonishing Bless them. Give them peace. Give them joy. May your holy hand go before them and behind them. And may you protect them through this week. In this week of prayer and fasting. That this church, that the church is entering in another power. In other grace. Thank you Lord Jesus. Glory be yours. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you King. Amen. Amen.